and we should now be live. So yeah. hello everyone. I'm here as you can see with the lovely Liz from Papillon Perfumery. Say hi Liz. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a quick chat before we went live and um, yeah, I can't wait for us to have a, a full on conversation now and share it with everyone because I think we're fascinating. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you know, it's certainly you know, you've got so much going on in your life with the animals and your family and the, the wonderful mm. perfume making. And, you know, you've got an owl and a raven and, <laughs> and yet you're, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to embarrass you too much. So we'll just see who's in the building and say hi. I was like, can you see the comments on your screen at all? That's no, good. no. Okay. I can't. All right. Um, so we've got Tracy from Comfort Incense. Oh, oh yeah. Lizzie, hey, from, <laughs> Lizzie from Rose and Jones, Carty, oh. she's over on Instagram, she is in, um, Hel it's Helsinki isn't it, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm nervous everyone, <laughs> I've got to be honest, um, so if I get things wrong, I do apologise, Carty says teacher's pet signing in, Scott from the Centurion says yeah. hey guys he's wearing tobacco rose yay i haven't even put perfume on i'm that nervous i've got i've got <laughs> i've got them here anyway so it's all good um <laughs> scotty's also teacher's pet uh tracy's wearing bengal rouge oh uh, lizzie is just preparing all my papillon fragrance and samples Aww. um and i should have got my if i get my laptop i'll be able to see these comments without doing that weird thing <laughs> <laughs> I quite yeah, like this weird thing, class. <laughs> <laughs> I like being weird. Yeah, weird. Something I enjoy. Let me find if I find this video on my um, own channel, and then I can see these comments mm. a lot better. So while I'm looking for my video, can you just tell everyone what you've been up to today, Liz? Okay, what have I been? Oh, I woke up a bit early this morning. Um, didn't really want to because it was Saturday. Today, normally Saturday mornings, the children go swimming. Um, but because of lockdown, none of that's happened. And I normally, Simon normally takes them and I clean the house. That's exciting, oh, isn't it? You see, now, there you go. that's burst everyone's bubble. <laughs> and no, it's been a very quiet morning. Just been catching up on a bit of housework, separating the children when they argue. Uh, <laughs> okay, normally, please, no, normally I'm out about doing stuff. Um, Simon did the horses for me today because he had to um, pop to a friend's in the village. So he did the horses while I was cooking lunch. So it's just been a, been a quiet one. Yeah. Okay. So let's start there. I wanted to ask you about your children because you, you've got a few, haven't you? So um, the youngest one is, is that Daisy? Uh, that's Daisy. Oh, She's um, just had her seventh birthday. Okay. And then Rowan, my only boy, he's yeah. 14. And then I've got Poppy, uh, Lily and Jasmine and they're yeah. all adults. They've all flown the nest. Yes. And Jasmine was supposed to get married, but yeah. that's not happened. But you were making a wedding scent for her, wasn't, wasn't you? Yeah, that's right. I mean, she can't, this is the thing, she can't really smell it because she, um, she had her nose broken years ago. Oh. So can only smell out of one nostril so actually i've been spraying jack her fiance and he was smelling it and mm. evaluating it and going oh yeah that's lovely and jazz was saying i can't even smell it oh. <laughs> yeah so they were supposed to have been getting married in october obviously wedding cancelled like mm. every other wedding in the country and it's been rescheduled for next october Okay. Fingers crossed. Yeah, hopefully it will all be a lot better uh, then. Yeah. Did you finish the wedding scent? I'm, I'm just curious how that went. I did, yeah, yeah. I did. But I really like Jazz to be able to smell it. And she was going to have an operation on her nose. Mm. Um, but I think there's some risk associated with it. And she, did, I mean, it, the operation would have probably been cancelled this year. Yeah. And she didn't want to have the operation done so close to the wedding just in case there were complications. So I'd really like her to just have the operation done on yeah. her nose so she can give me some feedback because it is supposed to be her perfume. Yeah. And not Jack's. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he steals all her perfume anyway. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's the kids. Um, let's talk yeah. about the animals. Because, oh, okay. um, those. Many of 
us will know and have seen your Facebook and your Instagram post and you've got snow is it snowy now? No, ghost. No, ghost. Yeah, ghost. Ghost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um how did that come about? How how did you acquire an owl? Well, um I had a uh, tawny owl quite a few years ago. Really long story. Probably haven't got long enough to give you the whole story. But he was my first owl. But prior to that, and then in between Freckle, the tawny owl, Simon and I would rescue and rehabilitate um, wild owls if they'd been injured in the local oh, area. So mm. People would phone us or bring us owls and, and that's what we would do. So we would rehabilitate and then re-release. And it's really lovely to do that. It's really, really um, rewarding. Mm. But, you know, if you're a bit emotional like me, it's also a bit sad, you know, like, yeah. oh, I love that animal, you know, it was so beautiful. So I decided, I can't remember which perfume it was. Every time I finish a perfume, I buy myself a present as a yeah. well done Liz. <laughs> and um, Ghost was one of those presents, actually after Dryad, that's right. And yeah. it's captive bred, um, so he's not from the wild. And I thought, well, he will be the one owl that I never have to say goodbye to. So that's yeah. how I ended up with Ghost. Oh, that's nice. And I hand-reared him. So he was hand-reared from this ugly little thing. He was about this big. Yeah. The ugliest thing you have ever seen. And he lived in our bedroom. And, yeah, and I hand-reared him. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And then, um, you've also got a raven. He's a jackdaw. Jackdaw, sorry, yeah. It's yeah. a black bird. I could have called him a yeah. magpie. <laughs> That's right, he's Corvid, yeah, it's Corvid. Same, same, pretty much the same thing, but smaller. So they're yeah. the, the smallest of the um, Corvid family. And he's really naughty, basically. And he mm. started um, flying off through the woods, which are just here, over mm. to... If you go right the way through the woods, there's a bungalow the other side with this really lovely couple that live there. Mm. And he keeps going over and annoying them at the moment. <laughs> so why does he keep coming back? How does it work that he doesn't choose to escape? Um, because he's imprinted. So again, I hand reared him. So he looks at the family as his group. You know, that's okay. his. Yeah. So we, we become an extent. He doesn't. I don't think he really realizes he's a bird as such. Um, but he has started going over to the neighbours. They quite like him, though. They keep feeding him ham, so I don't yeah. think he's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now that's amazing. I wouldn't have thought a, a, any bird would, without some kind of physical mm. attachment, would just keep coming back. I mean, that's fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. He's quite. He's he's quite cool, but very very different. I mean, him and Ghost. I always describe him as being like night and day. Mm. You know, Ghost is um, you know, he's very calm and he's very affectionate and cuddly, where a shadow is more likely to take your face off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just bear with me. I'm just trying to yeah. look at the stream yard and then I can actually do this thing properly. Like, um, you can highlight comments and things like that. So, um, and it wants to send me a code. So then I've got to go into my email. Um, so I'm just going to do that. Um, There we go. Um, and what? Oh, so um, I don't know if Tony's in the house yet. Um, Tony has to channel Fragdicted. Um, I'll see if his comments here. So he'll, there's a couple of questions I reckon he'll want to ask, and I'll just do those um, while we are. Um, I can't see if Tony's here. Let me do it on. I'll do it on here. God, there's so many people here. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. Sorry, I can't see all your comments. It's just, um, or I can't read them all. It's, there's a lot of people here that I'm not used to. Um, I can see Brandon, Thomas, Thomas from Ouch 110. Uh, Thomas. Lovely Jimbo's here. Brendan from the Da Vinci's Alchemist channel is here. Uh, we've got Tina, Gunmetal24, who you might know yeah. from Instagram. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, so lots of people. I can't see Tony, so um, I won't ask those questions anyway. <laughs> Just <laughs> now, don't worry. It's it's really nothing challenging. <laughs> it's nothing too personal. We've got Elise the Spear, so she's happy to be here. Oh, um, so um, what are you drinking? Let's start with our drinks off. Well, I did start with tea. Moment. That was my tea. Yeah, and now I've got a little little mini bottle of champagne that 
Simon bought me yesterday. So I thought, as you were having a lovely drink, there, yeah. I joined you. So cheers. Cheers, cheers Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I've just Good. got a vodka and Diet Coke in my mermaid glass. That's a lovely glass. Oh. Very blingy. It is, it's nice. <laughs> Right, I'm trying to because I'm trying to do too many things at once. This 851082, 851082. I just want to log into StreamYard. I should have done this first hand and then, then I can see the comments properly, and it's just um, a lot easier than trying to look on. Yeah, um, I don't want to enter the studio. I want to, um, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, god, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm that. I am um, so not technical. <laughs> I'm useless, seriously. It was only a few years ago my daughters had to teach me how to copy and paste. Oh, really? I'm not joking either. Oh, you've done well because um, we haven't had any. Well, I don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Touch wood. It's all so far. I mean, you entered the studio fine and um, yeah. Yeah, we can hear each other yeah. and I think people can hear us. So um, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. Right, I can't seem, to, I don't know how to do StreamYard without doing it on this thing here. So okay. um, I'm just going to have to watch the video on my laptop and then hopefully I can see the comments on there and then we're all good. So let me just see what else we're going to So that, you've got your champagne there now. Yep. If you're in the pub, what would Simon automatically order for you or do you sort of mix it up? No, normally be a glass of this if we're somewhere, if they do champagne by the glass. I'm not very good with wine, Claire. Yeah. Um, one glass of wine and I'm completely drunk. I don't know what it is with champagne that I can drink it. Well, probably three glasses of champagne and I'm drunk. I'm not a, yeah. when I say I'm not a very good drinker, I'm a real lightweight. I'm a cheap date. <laughs> cheap. Even though Simon knows I have the most expensive drinks, I normally yeah. have that too and I'm on the yeah, floor. No. Yeah. Or a, or a cocktail. I do love cocktails as well. Mm. So I see you make cocktails. Sometimes you post pictures of yeah. really, really nice looking cocktails. Yeah, I love making cocktails. So would you say you're a bit of a gourmand in general? Because I see you make some mm. lovely cakes and you're Oh, yeah. Cakes. Love food. Yeah, love food and um, drink and, yeah, yeah, everything like that. All the sensation. Ooh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, lovely. Right, let's see. We've got Hilary in the house. Hilary from the, the borough. She says, uh, she's saying hi. We've got Yana here from Tom and Lee's. Hi, Yana. Um, da, 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 da. Barry's here from Centralised. So lots of beautiful people here, he's saying. Uh, Peter, our friend Peter Corcoran's here. Hi, Peter. Hey, Peter. <laughs> and if I'm missing anyone, I do apologise. Um, but yeah, there's lots of people here, so which is brilliant. So that's um, really nice. Um, so we're keeping it sort of off perfume just to start with. And um, I wondered, do you read? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What sort of um, what sort of books do you read? Oh, well, actually, just before I, what do you do? Logging into your studio. Yeah. Um, I got an Amazon delivery. And it's actually someone I follow on Instagram had put a picture of this book up and he put some really interesting books on his Instagram stories. Mm. So I've tended to sort of go with some of his recommendations. So I'm just starting. Start it's supposed to be really horrific. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nor was I. No, I normally, um, I read anything. I, I yeah. just love reading. So beside my bed we're in the bedroom at the moment I've got a whole stack of books so those books by the bed would probably give you a better understanding of what I generally read mm. but this just looked really really interesting and I think because it was very dark and disturbing I thought I do quite like dark yeah. and disturbing at times so I thought no I've got to got to give that a go so that's what I'm about to start reading is that fiction yeah yeah bloody hope so Claire it's about cannibalism <laughs> Right, I've got to check. Actually. Oh my god! In case there's something going on somewhere that we know nothing about. Talking but. of cannibalism, are you? Um, do you watch Netflix? Yeah, I've just watched. I've just watched the first one of The Alienist. Have you seen that? No. Is it good? If you like things dark and disturbing, it's kind of. Um, I guess it's Victorian-ish times, but in America, in New York, 
and yeah. the alienist is basically a, an early door psychologist um kind of thing and yeah. this this series the first series is a sort of hunting for this really nasty um serial killer who targets children and there is cannibalism and gouging out of eyeballs and Ooh. all sorts of stuff so you might like it <laughs> I think I'll put that on my list of things. Yeah. To watch. I'm actually watching um, The Crown at the moment, so I've been okay. binge watching that and fell asleep on the sofa last night with it with it playing. So I don't know where I'm at at the moment. With oh, it. That, that is so funny because I, I'm watching The Crown as well, and it wasn't last night. It was the night before I fell, and I've never fallen asleep watching TV. Yeah. For, you know, not for as long as I can remember, but I yeah. didn't fall asleep watching The Crown two yeah. nights ago. We're we're on the. Um, the, the current series that's just come out yeah. is that where you're at yeah we're, yeah we're at that stage as well it's just it's really good i'm really enjoying it yeah so binge well that's the problem you see you binge watch it don't you and you think just gonna watch one yeah maybe should we watch another one and then it's really late and you fall asleep it's, it's so clever the concept of just yeah. shoving on the next show straight away because it, yeah. i mean hours and hours of mm. being lost to people all over the world yeah. who only <laughs> yeah. wanted to watch the one I know. <laughs> That's very <really> clever. <laughs> right, let's see if anyone's uh, is, uh, anyone wants to say anything or ask a question at the moment of Liz. Um, I'm going to carry on. Um, I have another question for you. What is the secret of your eternal youth? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. My mum is, um, how old's my mum? She's 74. And she looks incredible, but I do have Botox, darling. So I have I have Botox, but that's yeah. as far as I've gone so far with anything mm. like that. Don't know, just keep it simple, you know, have a good life. Think, down to sort of a healthy life in the country, keeping active. Yeah, probably. Um, mm. And sort of being outside quite a lot, you have to sort of protect your skin quite a bit. So mm. I think, you know, I've done a lot of that, except for my bloody neck, which I only started looking at when I was 40. Oh, yeah. By the too late so um <laughs> but yeah i don't know my mum still looks great and i and mm -hmm. so i do think um you know she's had nothing done claire mm -hmm. and i mean she could easily pass for a woman in her sort of 60s i guess yeah. so bearing in mind she's mid 70s that's not bad going so that's brilliant i was hoping to get some kind of secret from you that oh, <laughs> i could it? take away but <laughs> it's to think. i don't know i think again sort of enjoying you know i I love things in excess, but let's say I have a really excessive weekend, I will spend the following week atoning for it and drinking pints of water and yeah. nourishing myself. And then I think it kind of balances it out. Okay. It? All right. That's something, I'm really <laughs> That's something I'm not too brilliant at, I think. That's my problem. So. <laughs> I love the sun. I love a drink. Um, yeah. yeah. I, like, I like the sun as well, but I had a... Um, Oh, malignant melanoma -y thing on my, and that wasn't from sun though, Claire. Funny mm. enough, I was told at the time when it was removed and they did the biopsy that it was, um, would have been genetic. And my grandfather had oh. skin cancer as well, mm. but I still go in the sun, yeah, not because I'm, I'm being foolish, but because I think that sun's really actually very important, you know. And mm. I think we, we're told to be scared of it, so I'm just careful now, yeah, and get, get the fake town out as well. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to do that now. So things are getting a bit pasty around here. <laughs> it's that time of year, isn't it? Yeah. Are you what sort of seasons are you do you love the most? Oh god. Um I really like spring because it's always really hopeful. Mm -hmm. But I love um autumn winter until we get to January, then I'm sick of it. Yeah. Um, so I quite like it at the moment because it's all a bit new, isn't it? That it's getting mm. dark really early. But I get a bit tired of that. But I, I, I love all the seasons. But I think spring is the one that I look forward to the most. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely what hopeful. Hopeful. Yeah. New life. Yeah. It's good. And the other thing I wanted to ask is, do you do any sort of travelling? Have you got a favourite place? Are you more of a, I think you're more of a home girl, I'm thinking. Yeah, I haven't done a huge amount of travelling mm. um, other than sort of holiday. And in fact, we haven't had a holiday as a family for, well, abroad, that is, for mm. 10 years. And I mean, a lot of that has been the perfume business and yeah. Simon's business. And so, you know, with that, you, you know, having your own business is fantastic because it can buy you freedom. Mm. Um, so if I feel like taking a day off, as long as I have sort of cleared my desk, so to speak, I can do that. Yeah. Um, but with it also comes the, the sort of 
demands almost constantly that you've got to you've got to be there. But we did have a holiday booked for this year. We were supposed oh. to be going to Crete, mm. and it was cancelled. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so oh, we, we sort of rebooked it for next year. But whether or not, you know, who knows at the moment. Yeah. Um, but I love I love Italy. I love the food, and I love. Mm. The I tended to travel more in Europe than I have. Um, been to New York. I liked New York. Um, had some really great. It's all about food with me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> had some really great food in New York. Mm. Um, but yeah, I love. Um, I love Italy. I really like Spain as well. Actually, so it's some really beautiful parts mm. of Spain. Um, now, when we come up, when we do eventually come out of lockdown and we're allowed to travel again, I'd really like to spend a bit of time visiting the stockists that we have in Europe. I'd really like oh. to. Visit that. Because it was one of those things that I always kept saying I would do and didn't do. And then when you find yourself or all of us in this situation where we can't go anywhere, mm. you think, oh, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I go to Barcelona yeah. for the weekend when I kept saying I would? And mm. so, yeah, so I've learned quite a bit from yeah. this lockdown. So but on that I subject, um, <laughs> I, I was going to ask you about sourcing materials. Yeah. Because I know you use some, you use some really amazing um, materials in your uh, perfumes including ambergris and mm. how do you actually go about sourcing how do you um, sort of so you, uh, so yeah. ambergris in particular or any of the other anything in, i mean what what makes you do you do you kind of like just say oh i, I want to get some whatever or, or it's, does it come mm. about where you're going to make a perfume and you think right i think i want to try it with this this and this and then how do you actually go about sourcing those particular ingredients? So in the early days, it was a little bit harder. Um, mm. In the early days, as a, a non-brand, as, as Papillon was initially, it was really, really hard. Um, I was very, very lucky because there was a um, UK company that um, were one of the distributors for um, uh, Ferminique, um, uh, Givardin, some of the bigger companies. Mm. And they really took a punt on me. Um, whereas all the other places closed the door in my face and said, no, 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 you know, our minimum order quantity is five kilos. Mm. This particular company in the UK said, no, 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 we'll, we'll work with you. We'll do everything we can to help. And I'm eternally grateful. And then so then all of a sudden the door opens up to that that market whether it be naturals or synthetics mm. and then as time's gone on I guess what I've done is is built up um, a lot of contacts you know professional contacts um, so I've just recently started working with um, Beyond in France who have some incredible materials I've been mm. really really um, sort of astounded by the quality of them yeah. and so I just started working with them you know placing some orders with them for some bits and pieces um, the ambergris was a little bit harder um, I think naturals are harder to you know in terms mm. of find, finding a reliable genuine source and yes. also you know you've, you've got to you know hope that you can still order these materials in a year's time or two years time um, but the ambergris um, came about, I was contacted, I was originally buying my ambergris from Italy, from somebody who was already creating their own tinctures. Mm. And um, I was contacted, it's got to be, oh goodness, five years ago, six years ago, by a gentleman who was an ambergris hunter in the UK. Oh, wow. And he sent me a couple of samples and you've got to be a bit, you know, careful because yeah. there's a lot of dodgy folk out there anyway what they, what he sent me was really really good and we formed a relationship and he you know, created this business um with his ambergris where he now goes out and um beach combs it using his dog is a sniffer dog wow along the coasts in the uk so him and i have sort of forged a really nice working relationship and i think those things take time and they um, require trust and mm. um, yeah, and, and so a lot of it, it does sound really cliched, but a lot of what I was doing back then and where I'm at now, especially in terms of buying, it happened, it happened so organically that you almost don't see it happen. Mm. That, that all of a sudden, so now I am buying five kilos of something or a kilo. I mean, I was sent a sample of, um, oh my God, it's so beautiful, uh, Rose Taif, oil and oh my goodness it 
blew me away and I was like I have to have this because I know what I could do with this material um, and got the price and fell off my chair but <laughs> but now um, you know now I, I can say to the suppliers well would you sell me half a kilo of that as opposed mm. to you know and a lot of them are really happy to meet you halfway but yeah. it's taken it's taken a long time to get to that stage, Claire. Did, yeah. Didn't happen instantly. There were a lot of people, as I said, that would not would not entertain the idea of even working with me. Mm. So, whereas now I have them contacting me. Yeah, that's brilliant. Saying, can we send you samples? Can lovely, lovely. I just uh, thank you to Chris, the scented swordsman. He's just sent a super chat. He says for brightening my morning. Uh, yeah. So Chris. Um, He's a lovely chap. He's got his own YouTube channel now, but you might you might have seen him with Hillary. I don't know if you've seen Hillary from the borough. They do oh, some God. live chats and stuff together. Oh, um, nice. So thank you to Chris. Now I think I saw a few questions here. Um, and <laughs> John says, does Liz have a special fragrance in the works for her 30th birthday? Oh, I love him, John. <laughs> Say thank you, John. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I did say. Uh, okay, um, Sam from My World of Fragrance, she says, "Does uh, which of Liz's perfumes does she personally wear the most? Well, that would depend on many things. So in lockdown, when we first went into lockdown, I was wearing Bengal Rouge a lot, I think because it was very cosy and very comforting, not really challenging. Yeah, you've got it. So back. we're gonna go on my left wrist, carry go on. on. Yeah, and so that, so I went through pretty much all of lockdown, alternating between that and a couple of other fragrances, not not by myself, but by other brands. Um, when I'm creating a fragrance, um, I tend to wear that fragrance. By the point I know that it's almost finalised, I will wear that over and over again. So what I'm wearing at the moment and what I've been wearing almost consistently albeit not massively through lockdown is the new fragrance that okay coming next year okay. <laughs> now i've been doing a little bit of digging about the new fragrance so i'm not going to question i'm not going to question you on it just yet i think <laughs> that's probably the thing most people are most excited about so i think we'll save that to the little Let's bit save later. that Oh, yeah. and by the way, let me know if you're running out of time or anything. I don't want to no, sort of keep you. I'm so fine. Don't, no. don't sort if of. If children um, do come in running around screaming and crying, then that might add. It's, it's fine. It'll add, some, it'll add some fun. So I see that Thomas has got a question. I just need to find it. Um, um, Okay, John says, Liz, have you ever thought about the current trend of collaborating with influencers to create something? Would you have something in mind? Um, would I? It's, it, well, no, nobody's approached me, you know, with, with that in mind. Um, I think very much, I was, I, I've been approached by a couple of brands that have asked me to create fragrances for them. Oh, wow. One, big brand actually and I turned it down which a lot of people would probably go oh my goodness you're mad Liz but really you know everything that I put out every fragrance I put out has been thought through I've spent a lot of time on it and the reason I'm able to dedicate that time to it is because I'm not creating for anyone else I'm not creating to somebody else's brief and with a time constraint attached so I really couldn't run the two side by side. So in terms of collaborating um, with somebody else, I'm not, I'm not sure at this stage. It might be something that I would consider in the future. Um, I think I'd, at the moment I'd be, where I'd really want to go is create a fragrance um, and have a percentage going to various charities. That's what I'd like to do. That yeah. would be higher up on my list at the moment. That sounds nice. Oh yeah, I can't see it. I don't know. I, I, I personally would never. I don't know why, but mm. it's you, your your brand is so you that I mm. just can't see you mm. um, take like wanting to take direction from someone else. It's it's almost like the selling point of your brand is this has come from you, and you put so much time into your fragrances, like more time than most. 
Mm. So it wasn't Anubis eight years in the making. No, Anubis was, um, so I, I created Anubis, it's got to be 12, 13 years ago now. Um, and yeah, it took, it took a long time. I'm just trying to think how long it took. So the first three fragrances uh, were probably at least two, two years each, you know, for oh. each fragrance. And I wasn't working on them all at the same time. So I started with Anubis and then Tobacco Rose was the second fragrance, Ange was the third. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the time that that goes into a fragrance, I don't think in, it, the time isn't because I, I can't find the creative sort of prowess to complete it. I think it's my own, um, I, I'm never satisfied and I would never put anything out there that I thought, oh, that'll do, you know, I'm sure mm. a few people will buy it. I, I want people to be talking about the fragrances in 10 years from now and Papillon's mm. about to go into its seventh year. So next June, it will be seven years old. And I think, well, how lucky am I? You know, people are still talking about Anubis, which was the first fragrance I ever created long before the brand was was even considered i wasn't yeah. even thinking about creating a perfume brand so so that's what i wanted to achieve i wanted to achieve some longevity um to create a loyal um customer base and to have people coming back to those fragrances rather than them being something disposable um so yeah and i think i think sometimes that takes time so creating a fragrance and i like to um also see how each fragrance is going to stand up to each season. So we were talking about seasons, you know, how it performs in the winter as opposed to the summer and the spring. And I find that really interesting. So I like to spend a bit of time. And I think when I spend that time with a finished fragrance, when I've just finished one, that is my last moment with that perfume. Yeah. When it's mine. Yeah. And then after that, it is no longer mine. It becomes everybody else's so so maybe that's part of it as well subconsciously you know that okay. i'm not even thinking about okay how many would you say like how many things are you working on at one time so for example right now have you got a few that you're kind of playing with well i've just finished um the perfume that's going to be released next year so i finalized that i don't know a few weeks back yeah and thought, right, walk away from it now. That's it. No more fiddling. Um, and I've always got ideas. So I have um, notebooks where I'm constantly. So so throughout the, the creation of the last fragrance, I was still having ideas for other perfumes, you know, for the future. But I was not working on them in the physical sense. Right. So yeah, I would write right. it down in a notebook and I would throw some ideas in there and possibly these materials that I felt would would fit that theme all that concept um so the notebook is forever being filled up but i don't ever work on more than one fragrance at a time so so once i start work on a fragrance that's the one i stay with and yes. i'm loyal to that to the very end and, and i think for me it's um i i don't want to be too distracted mm. I, don't, I don't want to and, and i'm very lucky that i have that freedom that i'm able to say no this is what i'm working on at the moment and yeah and I guess if I was collaborating with others, Claire, you know, going back to your earlier, mm. oh, it was John's question, wasn't it? I wouldn't have that because I mm. would then have, you know, other forces coming in saying, well, how's that fragrance going? And I need to smell this. Yeah. I'd be like, no, go away. I'm <laughs> doing this at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So Thomas has got a question. He's wondering how many frags how many fragrances you own and what are your favorites so other well, other brands okay well i used to think that i owned a lot of fragrance and um so so my non-perfumey friends will come to the house and come into my bedroom and go oh my goodness look at all the perfume you've got mm -hmm. and i was like yeah i do i've got so much perfume no i don't honestly instagram there are people with wardrobes and mm -hmm. you know houses full of the stuff so my my collection has also been very much um, streamlined down. So a lot of um, the ones I really love. Let me grab a couple. Let me go yeah. over there. Let me go over here. I'm going to grab, 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 grab. Okay. I'm going to try and get to all your questions as best I can. Because <laughs> um, so, so many questions. So we'll, <laughs> we'll try and do the best we can. 
I just, well, I recently found this fragrance. I really love um, lavender in perfume. And I was looking for the perfect lavender fragrance. And I bought this during lockdown. You can see I've really hit it quite hard. Oh, wow. The um, Histoire de Parfum, and that's the 1725. I really love that. That's gorgeous. And that yeah. for me is just, that's been really easy, you know, easy wearing during lockdown. I love this. I love everything Antonio does. So that's my, okay. my, my, how do you say it? My, I say, I say my, but I probably got it wrong. No, you're probably right. I always called it May, but I don't think I'm right. No, I don't think Antonio of mine. And then I love the classic Guerlain. So Jiki, that's mm. my, everyone laughs at me because that's my easy way. That's when I'm going light and easy. <laughs> nice and breezy, Claire. No, I'll I wait. think you quite like your animalics don't you because my is um is very i mean i found that really i couldn't i couldn't do <laughs> i can imagine you being floored by it Claire. it's quite it's hyracium isn't it i think is yeah it hyracium in i think there's there's everything so i think there's hyrax and civet and castorium mm. i think it's fantastic um mm. but, but again you know you have to, you know i love my animalics but i have to be in the mood to wear them so mm. even Salome, which I created. Yeah. There's some days where I smell it and I think, what were you on, Liz? <laughs> what were you doing in there? But I'm really proud of it because yeah. I think, um, yeah, I mean, again, the animalics, you, you know, they're Marmite, aren't they? And again, mm. they have their place. I mean, Jazz wore Salome. We were going up to London for an evening out. This is my eldest daughter. Mm. And before we went, she said, Mummy, let me borrow one of your perfumes. You know, which one shall I wear? And I said, well, we've got tobacco rose. She said, no, 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 that doesn't work on me. And I always wear Anubis. And what about Salome? And honestly, we were on the train, Claire. Yeah. And I don't know <laughs> what she did to this perfume. But it was, it was just like someone had urinated all over. I, I was I was sat there saying, I don't know what you've done to it. I don't know what you've done to it. So, and I think it, it proves how... Um, yeah perfume changes so much from one individual to another mm. um, and it didn't work for jazz oh, <laughs> you just stuck with it for the evening I know, it, was, it was hideous to be honest it's brilliant um okay uh scent samurai says let's talk legacy liz are any of your children interested in your work or perfumery do you think they might pick up the baton in the future or even collaborate with you in the future oh that's a really nice question because mm. that's something that um I, I I I put a lot I don't know not pressure on my kids I don't my eldest daughter she does quite a lot of writing for me so everything pretty much that you see on the website um, I will send her um, you know words and feelings and say to her you know this is what the fragrance evokes this is where I was going with it here's the inspiration and what she will take is my garbled thoughts and place them in a cohesive form. And so she will do a lot of the writing um, and she's currently doing writing for the new fragrance. Um, Lily and Poppy, not so much. What they like is to come and get free perfume, I think, yeah. that's what they really enjoy. Um, Rowan actually is really quite interested, my son, and I think that's a wonderful thing. You know, they, him and Daisy will come into the studio I have to sort of ignore what they're doing or I'll have heart failure and they're opening up bottles and smelling and chatting with each other about what it smells like. So my hopes are pinned on on those two because I did make a joke actually. I did say to Simon, I said, if I drop down dead tomorrow, I said, no one knows how to make these bloody perfumes. <laughs> what, I need, what I need to do is get someone in the studio and say, if anything happens to me, mm. this is how you do it. And, mm. and this is what I mean by this on the formula. Um, so it's something that, um, yeah, maybe maybe Rowan and Daisy, I think, mm. possibly. But I want I want my kids to do their own thing. I don't want to push them. Mm. Yeah. And I've got loads more years in me, Claire. I'm going to be going on for years. Well, looking at you now, Liz, I mean, I can see you still going in 100 years and still looking well, fabulous as well. well. I hope so. <laughs> um, Brusque Mick says hi Liz I think Salome is very similar to you isn't it to me yeah I think yeah probably I think um we all have sort of aspects of ourselves don't we the parts we feel to the ones we love the ones we're closest to and then we have um the other parts that we hide away and I think all of my phrases all of them 
I always joke and say they have my DNA not just running through them, it's embedded even in the bottles as the mm. bottles are being filled and packed away because I'm there touching everything. Um, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, every one of those fragrances, every single fragrance I've created um, take either takes on an aspect of myself. And I again, I think that's very, um, I don't know, subconscious. It's not something I consciously think about. I'm not there thinking, oh, I've got to make this perfume like that. I would hate to yeah. work like that. Um, so everything that I create is very much, um, it evolves from a creative idea and then moves towards a point where I can grasp it, um, manipulate it in a form where I say, yes, I'm happy with that. And so, yeah, yeah and I think Salome is, there was a lot of research that went into Salome. I'm not gonna say too much there, Claire. Mm -hmm. You probably would know where that was going. I uh, well, I saw, I saw a bit at the time, it's a quite a gruesome uh, <laughs> sexual type <laughs> image, wasn't it? <laughs> it was but, a love um, research. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's a perfume I'm really proud of, and I know it's polarizing. I know there's going to be the lovers and the haters, and I'm I'm glad for that. And yeah. I think that actually makes me smile. And if I yeah. see a review where someone goes, "Oh my god, it smells like a toilet," and what's going, it it kill well, it kills me in a good way. Yeah, I think yes, because I've evoked a response, and mm. I think. To evoke any response is better than no response. You know, if someone being lukewarm about it. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really proud of it because it was a, a perfume that when I was about to release it, I mean, the only focus group I have are my friends and family and it's, mm. a, it's a select few that I use. And I do remember my children and Simon saying to me, you've lost your mind. <laughs> what are you? And I said, no, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um, and, and so I'm really happy that I, I did release it. Okay, I've got a question from Denby. Mm. When Liz is writing formulas, does she begin with a clear concept of which guides the formulation? Or is it more of a case of experimenting with the chords and notes, which in turn forms a conceptual picture? Yeah, absolutely. So it's the latter. Um, so what I don't do, so even though we have, um, you know, regulatory bodies where we can only use a certain percentage of this material or a certain percentage of that, when I'm creating, even though I have that in the back of my mind, that I'm aware that those limits are there with any material that I'm, or potentially any material that I'm about to use, what I don't let it do is I don't let it hinder my um, creative input into that fragrance. So it's rare that I have created, the one fragrance I had to do it with was Anubis actually, and that is creating a fragrance with no consideration to, um, you know, safety assessments or anything like that. Have you got Anubis there? As well? I've only got a small decal, but that's now going on my <laughs> right list. <laughs> when I first created that fragrance, it was way over in, on the limit of Jasmine Absolute. So when it came to um, releasing the fragrance into the public domain, I have I had to change that formula. And at the time, I I was being really dramatic because I love a sense of the drama. Mm. With someone sat there with the calculator saying to me, "Darling, you're going to have to change it." And I I do believe I even did that at one point and said, "I'm not doing it," I can't. <laughs> but I had to, and I yeah. did. And actually, Claire, it didn't it didn't change massively. You know, you would you would really struggle to spot the differences between the two. Mm. Um, so yeah, when I start creating a fragrance, I am um, yeah I have the the creative starting point. I generally have an idea of the materials I'm going to use. Then I will sit down and I will start the creative process. And when I think I'm I'm getting it to a point where we could be looking at finished fragrance here, that's when I start then going back and saying right, well, how much of this have I used? And and I don't cost anything until the end either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking for a question. Um, I think Sam's got a question, but I can't find it now. So I keep losing the comments. Um, I saw Tony asked, um, what what um, would you recommend for sort of someone who hasn't tried your fragrances yet? What, what would be a good starting point? Okay, well, I think, um, Tony, they're all really, really different. And um, it's, I think it's always really hard to 
um, you know, suggest fragrances for other people, even people you know really well. You can think you know someone really well and buy them mm. a fragrance and you can really cock it up. Um, they're all very, very different. I, I would always say sample fragrances from any brand and we do offer samples and so do our stockists. And I think it very much depends on on what, what you are looking for. And, mm. you know, if you take some, you know, fragrance like Anubis, Anubis is smoke and leather and incense, very, very different on the other end to say Bengal Root, the last fragrance I created, um, which is all very cozy and honey and mm. roses and vanilla. Um, so I, I think, yeah, I would say sample them. And um, I mean, they, they all work really well i think according to what you're doing i, I wear all of my fragrances for mm. different purposes um i love on in the spring i love bengal rouge you know when i've got the fire on and i'm having a cozy evening at home anubis is my you know bit of my kick-ass perfume mm. salome is my seductive perfume you know so i have i've got the full arsenal haven't i claire you've really? got everything you've got the lovely soft um iris angelique yeah um, you've got the gourmand rich oriental bengal rouge as you mm. say the kick-ass anubis mm. um you've got the dirty rotten skanky lady mm. that is slow me <laughs> <laughs> um, i don't know dryad too well because um i i saw that it had galbanum as quite a strong note and i remember i tried it in less on Terz just mm. smelt the top notes and it was quite green which is just not my thing so i don't know gal um dryad too well and then of course we've got tobacco rose which was my very first perfume, yeah that's right yeah uh, which is is not what you expect and it's not actually my usual taste in perfume because it's not particularly sweet it's yeah. kind of savory isn't it and yeah but i love how it develops it's just it mm. just keeps on giving but I would say to Tony, just get the sample set. Yeah. And try try them all. Them. Take your time. Yeah, try them. And I mean, you know, if I, you know, different moods again, you know, I will have some day where I can't face fragrance. And then I have other days where I'm looking for something light or something mm. sweet, you know. And I think that's the beauty of fragrance is you can change it up every day. Wash it off if you don't like it. It's great. Yeah. And it's weird how you have to be in the right mood for a perfume. So I've been finding, yeah. me, I've just been reaching for light stuff, simple stuff, yeah. which um, is unusual for me. I'm always, I'm always wanting to test myself and try different things. And um, mm. but every single day, I'm just wanting the really light stuff. So it's mm. weird how you can change sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel even now, I don't know if you can see. Hey, sweetie. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's she. Um, uh oh, she's going to try and no, don't go up there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she has to get in on the action every single time. Um, yeah, it's funny how moods and and, yeah. and stuff and you know being ill or yeah, or exactly. anything can really affect what you want to put on yeah. your skin and what you want to smell. Yeah, and I've asked Sam to repeat her question. So my world of fragrance, Sam. Hmm. Hopefully, I think you just repeated your question, but my computer's not. Have we got um? I don't know if she has actually, um, but we. She did say earlier, thoroughly enjoying how natural Liz is in front of the camera. So that's nice. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Cool. I'm sure it's very everyone. Different is. Me. I normally normally hide behind Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thomas says he's got Dryad on today. Lovely powdery green. Aww. Tim Tim's here. The lovely Tim Wilcox. He says his Dryad oh. is beautiful. Little sprites dancing in a forest glade yeah that's nice and gum metal says dryad is amazing it smells witchy to me so it seems mm. to give a kind of um, a mystical feel then to to a lot of people mm. yeah uh, we've, we've got yeah. tara tara says can't wait to try more so far i've only a decant of the bengal rouge den b says anubis is my favorite would love to smell the original um that didn't meet the jasmine restriction <laughs> limits um Lizzie says, question for me and Sam, would Liz consider an owl inspired fragrance? Oh, definitely. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Ghost Ghost has been earmarked. I've I've scratched a few notes down in my <laughs> my big notebook. 
he's coming, don't worry. I mean, oh, I've got a bit of an issue because I started, I don't want to start a trend because obviously when I did Bengal Rouge, that was my homage in a way to Mimi, my Bengal cat. Mm. And then I was looking at Mama Nu and thinking, oh, she's going to be left out now. <laughs> and then I got the ghost and I got shadow and I got the horses. And But I do have um, a horse fragrance. Uh, I say horse, that sounds a bit bizarre. Not a horse, yeah. fra not a fragrance for horses. A fragrance <laughs> for people um, that I started to work on quite a few years ago, actually, just as a mod, just as a little idea. Mm. And um, I really do want to release that at some point. And again, that's my, um, yeah, my olfactory memories of my time with my horses. So, mm. yeah. So, but, but Ghost definitely. Yeah. He's just gorgeous, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm just gonna see what else we've got here um addicted to fragrance says i want to be buried with salome just in case there's an afterlife oh, amazing. <laughs> i think i'd go with anubis for that that's that feels like kind of fitting um let's see if i've missed any other questions if you've got any questions i've missed i'm really sorry i am trying but do repeat them um and i think if you at smurfy girl it will highlight it so um, try that and I'll do my best. Um, let's have a quick see. Right, Gunmetal says, are there any futuristic synthetic focused scents that you admire? Oh goodness. Well, I have to be completely honest here. I am so far behind with what so many brands are doing. I'm talking about big brands now. Mm. So years ago, take me back before I had Papillon, you know, when Chanel launched a new fragrance, I was first in the queue, you know, had to smell the new stuff. I'm so out of touch with what everybody else is doing, other than the brands who I formed friendships with. So people like Antonio Gardoni um, and a few others where we tend, and Galavan, where you sort of exchange your scents. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not, not because you're promoting them to each other, but because you're sharing it you know, because you are both in the industry and you're you're sort of showing some love so i'm so out of touch with what is new it's a bit embarrassing actually and i wonder whether that and i was thinking this the other day because i was having this conversation with a girlfriend of mine and and we used to every single year go up to london and it was our annual pilgrimage and we would spend a day in london we'd start the morning with with oysters and champagne and be thoroughly pissed by the afternoon <laughs> <laughs> but in the middle bit, we would we would go. Well, I would drag her. Bless her. She's such a good friend because I don't think she's that into perfume. We would go round Harrods and then we'd do Harvey Nicks and we do all the fragrance you know, areas and, and mm. smell everything. And so I was up to date with all of it. And I said to her, oh "My goodness, we haven't been to London for ages, and we need to do it again." And we were discussing it, and I thought, "I need to because I wonder if what I'm." And this is what I said: "I wonder if." what I create now is from a point in time when that's what we were doing. You and I were smelling these and it was still very much the sort of classic fragrances and things have moved on and I've kind of been left behind. A bit like modern technology, Claire. I think, and I reckon I speak for many people in the room and I'm not, because I'm not one that enjoys a lot of the modern aroma chemicals. Mm. I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think you you wouldn't use anything that wasn't beautiful anyway. I didn't no. do something amazing. There's so many modern. Um, there's a lot of even niche and indie houses now that uh, that kind of rely quite heavily on the the very dry, woody, ambery. Oh dang! Uh, I know that's. Like, I know the ones you're talking about. I've sent yeah. quite a few years ago of a material called um, Amber Max. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that sounds it. Seriously, I was. Um, I just thought, you know what, this is like having your teeth filed down with no anesthesia. This is what this is. <laughs> and I played with it. I played with it in the studio. I played with it at 1% mm. dilution. I went lower than, and I thought, this, it screams within a formula. So what you have is this, is this synthetic noise, I think, yes. that permeates a formula. Mm. And I think um, fragrance in a way you know should it be challenging should it ask questions well maybe yeah but ultimately you have to wear this you know yeah. this, this, 
if we're talking about art, art is something very different. And I love that side of it as well. It happens a lot in the industry and I think that's fantastic. But if we're talking about what you wear, I think to have that synthetic. Oh, you've just frozen. you just frozen, Liz. Um, no. I don't know. If, is your battery out or? No. Okay. Am I you're back? back? You're back now, yeah. Yeah. I just think in a way it's a bit of a cheat as well. I think, well, why would you do, why would you do that? I don't, so to me, it doesn't really make any sense. Um, mm. And I understand about sort of pushing um, the boundaries as well. And that, you know, we, we have to sometimes do these things to move forward. I get that. Um, but it's not a style that um, particularly resonates with me, which, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, same here. And I think that's why I enjoy your creations. And that's why I'm always really excited when you do announce that you're doing something new. Even if it's not for me, even if you're, you're mm. using, you know, materials that aren't for me, like animal, strong animalics or whatever. Yeah. But I know that you that this is something that's been created with time and love mm. and not sort of rushed out and just built upon a, a building block of a load of aroma chemicals, yeah. which you yeah. do see more and more now. And another, I would, if I was to compare you with anyone, Francesca Bianchi, because she also creates these voluptuous, rich, full-bodied, multifaceted perfumes that yeah. are just beautiful. Yeah, and she's lovely. She sent me some of her samples, actually. Mm. Again, that really lovely exchange, you know, mm. and I really enjoyed her work. And again, I think... Um, I don't know. I think, you know, in a way, fragrance should be considered, you know, in terms of creating it. Um, we can all chuck something in a bottle. Mm. I can take you into my studio now and chuck something in a bottle in five minutes and mm. it would smell fine. And yeah. you could probably release it as a fragrance. But I think it comes down to, um, I don't know, what each individual brand is trying to say. Mm. And, and, and I guess with Papillon, when I, you know, we talk about longevity with the brand, I didn't want to just be a flag in the pan that, that came along and created some half good perfumes and, you know, created a few more and maybe disappeared. I want to be around for years and years and mm. years. And I yeah. think the only way, <clears throat> excuse me, the only way I can do that <clears throat> is by creating fragrances that are going to be as, I don't know, interesting in 10 years time as they are now. I hope so. Anyway, that's what I hope. Yeah, I think I think you you're achieving that absolutely. Um, okay, let's have a look. See see what people are talking about. Susie Klein says, "Happy, happy, joy, joy." I'm sitting here in a cloud of Bengal rouge. Oh. I'm on bottle number two since March of this year. The absolute perfect scent for me. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, we've got I think um, we've got just add light in the building. We've got ultimate prime. Um, and uh, John says, Liz, if your ingredients became impossible to get hold of, would you rather discontinue yeah. the fragrance if you couldn't reformulate? Yeah. Oh, Definitely. my doorbell. Who's on <laughs> for a door? I'm just going to check my door, Liz. Are you okay if I leave you for a second? Oh, God, shall, I answer, shall I answer the question? Why yes. You yeah, please do. No, it's going to feel weird not talking to you. Um, yes, I would. Um, definitely rather discontinue a fragrance than um, adapt it and, and try and fix it. I think I'd have a go. I think I'd try and um, reformulate. And if it didn't work, then yeah, it would be it would be pulled. These are my babies. Can't mess with the babies. Hey, Claire. Hello. Who was that? I'm nosy now. I need to know who was at your door. It was a Hermes delivery. <laughs> Boots parcels. I think Ooh, um, boots. Thick. It's brilliant. Boots sometimes send me stuff just to do a little review on their, you know, like oh, a customer review. Lovely. Yeah. So it looks like they sent me something to review, which is fantastic. Cool. <laughs> but it's an opportunity to grab my vodka because I I've, I've just filled myself up again as well. <laughs> by the way, it's covered in cat. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, is um. I can't see. Can't you can't see? There's cat no. hairs all around. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that I, I get nervous when my doorbell goes, particularly once it gets dark. Is that weird? Yeah, I do. Any time of the day, I'm forever saying, mm. "There's someone on the drive." 
There's someone on the drive. <laughs> Guys, yeah, they're delivering something. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> uh, right, I'll pour this and then um, I've got some more questions myself. I yeah. was going to ask, could you just give us a really brief um, idea of how the brands came about to start with? Was it yeah. sort of a plan or did it happen by accident? No, it well, when I say accident, um, I created um, Anubis. So I, I did a um, five day natural perfumery course with the late Alec Lawler. And um, I came back from that course thinking, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I'm gonna create a fragrance and it's all gonna be lovely. And I took that course because nobody, well, you, you know, if you Googled it, what is perfume made from? You couldn't find an answer. Yeah. This funny old industry that's full of a lot of, um, I, want, I, I hate to say the word lies, but a lot of misinformation and um, about what goes into your perfume. So mm. I naively did this five day um, natural perfume course and came back and expected to make a beautiful fragrance and thought, well, this is a load of bloody rubbish. I don't know what I've just made here. Um, so I started sort of researching it further. And I think this was for my own curiosity, Claire. It honestly mm. wasn't going anywhere else. I just thought I'd really like to have a go at that. I think mm. I, I, I could make a really nice fragrance. And I was imagining the fragrance I would make for myself, which subsequently became Anubis. And then I discovered synthetics and I discovered how synthetics work really beautifully with naturals and how you can create this very harmonious balance. Mm -hmm. So Anubis was created and I wore this fragrance and people would say, oh, you smell nice, Liz. What are you wearing? And I'd say, oh, I've made this myself. And I suppose it's a bit of a bit of a lovely ego thing. I've made mm -hmm. a fragrance for me. And um, and then I, I love roses. So then I thought I'd really like to make a rose perfume and then looked, you know, you start looking at the prices of these materials yeah. Claire, and you're like, this is really expensive. So I thought if I'm going to start making more fragrances and potentially sell them, because a couple of people had asked for bottles of Anubis, mm. um, I could sort of do something here. And initially what I had in mind, so I'd sold some Anubis, I created Tobacco Rose, I then created Angelique. And these were being sold sort of when I say around the village, it sounds a bit Royston Vasey, doesn't it? From League of Gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you watch League of Gentlemen, but, but yeah. So, so yeah. So then, um, I with the money that I was, um, you know, hardly anything. I wasn't charging hardly anything for these bottles of perfume. When I look at it now, mm. I was just going, "Oh, give us twenty quid." You know, you're like, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what it cost me to make. Um, I bought more materials, and that allowed me to create tobacco rose and Angelique. Mm. And um, and then I thought, well, maybe I could sell these at like wedding fairs. Maybe I could do wedding fairs and things. And I didn't really know. I didn't have a plan. Um, at this point, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Mm. Had you done the IFRA stuff? Uh, no, 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 no. no so okay. that, no. That, so this yeah. is all just me fannying around on my own, <laughs> thinking I'm having a lovely time here, mm. and I'm being really creative, and I'm really enjoying it. And then I thought, well. You know, if I did create a brand around this, would it have legs? And I thought, well, yeah. And that's when I was thinking wedding fairs and maybe making, and I made a bespoke fragrance for a bride in the village, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I was thinking, oh, this would be really good because it's something I can do from home around the children and it's going to be really wonderful. Um, and then it all sort of happened accidentally. So I, I created the brand and thought, Liz, you've got to kind of shoot a little bit higher, to be honest. You've got to... I remember um, my ex, and this this be the first time I publicly said this. He said to me, so this was when I had an idea many years before I'd even Papillon was e had even launched. He said, "Well, who's going to buy your perfumes? You're nobody." And I remember thinking, "Well, that's really interesting, isn't it?" Because firstly, that's an insult, mm. but secondly, what that's saying is you have to be an established brand. The brand has to be bigger in a way than the fragrances that you create. So it's the brand that's, you know, that is, and we know this, we know that. And him and I split up anyway, and my life moved on. And it was still in the back of my mind that I wanted to do something with these fragrances. And I thought, no, I'm going to do it. Because you know what, when I've had really good ideas and haven't done anything about it, I've seen other people do it and mm. do really, really well. 
And so a lot of it happened very accidentally in the sense that my children showed me how to go onto Twitter. Didn't have a clue what Twitter was. I was like, what, what even is it? What am I doing here? And, um, and so I started interacting with a few people and at about the point I decided, so, so by now, so fast forwarding, the fragrances have been safety assessed, ready to go as a brand. You know, I don't really know where it's going to go. Um, and I fell pregnant and I fell pregnant with Daisy. And so everything was kind of delayed with the, with the launch. And I've been doing a bit of tweeting and there was a really nice guy on there called Callum. I didn't know who he was. I just said, oh, well, let me send you some samples. And I didn't realize that he was the manager of Les Santer. Oh, wow, yeah. And so he showed the fragrances to the owner. Then we had a meeting and they wanted to take the fragrances. Then um, we had our lovely stockist in um, Cleveland, Ohio, who had been following us on Inst um, not Instagram, Twitter, sorry. So this was prior to Instagram. Um, and she really went, that was, that's Anne. I don't know whether Anne will be watching, but if she is, she's great. Anne is lovely. She went, really went out on a limb and said, no, we're going to take your brand. And she was the first stockist in America. So it, when I say it grew accidentally, again, if I hadn't sent those samples to Callum, yeah, you know, me fanning around on Twitter, posting pictures of cats because I'm pregnant and I'm like, well, there isn't, there isn't going to be a brand launch at all. Um, yeah, so I don't know, maybe it was meant to be. What, I just wonder, actually, on that subject, what's your kind of, your your feelings on that? Are you someone that believes in karma and that if you just, I mean, things happen for a reason or do you think that because you put out um, positivity yeah. and good stuff that, and that you have the right mindset that things, yeah. you know, like yeah. the kind of um, <clears throat> law of attraction kind of thing? Yeah, I do. And I think, you know, I, I sort of play down a bit and sort of make light of um, of of me sort of attempting to launch a brand. But actually, it was something I was really in, you know, passionate about. I was really fired up, very quiet. Mm -hmm. um, so even though I wasn't out there shouting and, and yelling about it, quietly inside, I thought, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I will do this. And yeah, and I think so a lot of it came from, and I believe that. I believe that what you put out, you attract. Mm -hmm. um, makes perfect sense, doesn't it, yeah. really? I mean, if you're going to spend mm -hmm. your day shouting at people and, and being unpleasant, you're going to be getting a lot of that coming back your way. Exactly. And so, yeah, yeah, I did. Um, but a lot of it was hard work as well, Claire. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was um, times where I really did doubt myself um, and thought, well, maybe I got lucky with the first three fragrances I created. So then I had that. Self-doubt. But then yeah. the pressure was hugely mm -hmm. on. And so, so when obviously the family realised that the next one coming was going to be Salome. They were like, "What you? What you doing? You know, you, <laughs> you've just had three fragrances really well received, and now, now you're just going to go and upset everyone." <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So Tony says, "Can I ask you the serious question?" Now, I did actually have this written down, Tony. I wanted to make sure you were here. Does pineapple belong on pizza? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> my, my children love pineapple on pizza. They are heathens. I have told them this. No, chilies do. And anchovies. Oh my God, yes. I love chilies. Chilies, anchovies, olives. I love sort of salty, spicy, anything that's going to yeah. walk in the mouth. <laughs> What's your favourite cake? Because another thing Tony's very fond of and famously fond of is cake. So cake. if you had to choose like one cake, what would it be? No, oh, chocolate cake. Really? Chocolate, yeah, I love chocolate. Mm. Um, so punk, um, mm. go on. No, Victoria's sponge is pretty good though as well. I <laughs> saw you you posted a picture once of a, a Victoria's sponge and it's uh, kept a little, it's like got a little spot in my heart. <laughs> come come over and see us, Claire. And I'll make I would you, love to. I'll make you a Victoria sponge. Okay. I know my kids love that. They love the Victoria sponge. I do like a Victoria sponge. Mm. But I really like it with cherry jam. I love cherries. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, so cherry jam. And and so like if you think like Black Forest Gatto, like chocolate and cherries. I mm. love that combo. Mm. Really good. I made a um uh an orange polenta cake the other day with a rosemary syrup that you 
so you skewer the cake afterwards and pour mm. rosemary and that was really good wow it was this big i kid you not and, and the four of us ate it in one evening <laughs> <laughs> it was good then <laughs> it was really nice. oh, i was just amazing. Amazing. shoveling it in um <laughs> right so i think we've got a question from lizzie i'm just trying to find it um I, I can't see your question, Liz. I would Liz. Right here we go. Uh, would Liz consider creating a fragrance that brings a lunar experience? Sorry, a bit of an obscure question, but I think Liz could do it. Yeah. Well, I do love the moon. It's no mm. secret there. Um, yeah, and I think it would have to be a witchy moon. But you see, I'd be thinking dark moon here. So if we're talking about moon phases. I'd be going not full moon, bright and glowing. I'd be going dark moon when she's right. invisible. So absolutely how, how do you think that might smell just roughly oh dark moon well i think there would be it would be cold and it would be damp and it would be but there would be a, a sort of energy hiding behind it and i think i'd have to really think about the material but yeah i think it would be very very dark mm. yeah well that sounds amazing um uh, Lisa says, how do you determine the balance between natural and synthetics? I read somewhere that Anubis is about 50-50. They all are. So, mm. yeah, Lisa's right. And that's not, again, that's not a conscious thing. And I think this is the beauty of um, any creative form is you sort of, every artist finds their way. They find their point at which they go, yeah, this works. And, and you're not even considering it. It wasn't until we did the safety assessments actually for um, Anubis, Tobacco, Rose and Angelique in the early days. I say we, I handed it to Simon and said, can you help me work out the percentages on this, please? Um, they, that I said to him, you know, what, what have we got in there? Have we got roughly 50-50? Have we got 75? You know, how's it working? Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what, bizarrely, all three of them, you've pretty much got a 50-50 split between your synthetics and your naturals. Mm. And again, not a conscious thing, Claire, because mm. I probably couldn't calculate that anyway. Yeah. Going on, my maths is really bad. Um, and, and I think it works. I think there's something, yeah. so, so what you have is, is you've got your beautiful naturals that have, depth and complexity um, and then you have your synthetics that that have the ability to add some buoyancy to that mm. um, naturals are beautiful i find on their own they can get quite muddy so you can end up you know what, what looks great on paper when you're scribbling something mm. down and you create it with just naturals can be quite muddy and there isn't a lot of life in there um, and the synthetics add that and i mm. think it's um uh, for, for me, it just works. And again, as I say, it's not a conscious um, consideration when I'm making a fragrance. It just seems to happen. And I think yeah. maybe my nose is attuned to um, knowing when I, when the balance is kind of off. Mm. I, you know, we were talking about Amber Max, weren't we? And yeah. like that, like killer note in there. I don't ever want anyone to smell my fragrances and go, Price, there's a sort of synthetic, you know, boom going on in the background. Yes. Yeah. So, so I think what I'm doing, you know, in terms of physically sitting there when I'm creating, you know, writing a formula and working through it is ensuring that nothing like that is happening because I find it offends my nose, Claire. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that because I'm, I'm the yeah. same these days. I've got really, really fussy. Yeah. And um, if I can pick out, it's only particular. It seems to be particular synthetics. Yeah. But if I can really pick out a strong, and I like the smell of Isoe Super, but it's so if do it's I. Really yeah. strong. Then I just I feel like the fragrance is a bit lazy. Like so do I. Yeah, I just, it's a yeah. bit of, it's just a bit of a cheat because actually Isoe. If you're looking at something like um, Isoe or Ambroxan, you know, on their own in isolation, they are. They're beautiful. They're, they're, mm. they're almost fragrances in themselves. And so I do think that maybe some brands are going, we're there. All we've got mm. to do is there we go and, and we're going to sell it. And I just think, no, no, no. You know, try and just try and do something else. Yeah. With it. And But then that's my, that's my personal preference. You know, mm. many people aren't 
offended by the smell. And and yes. I've got some really gorgeous synthetics, Claire, in my studio. You know, yeah. some... I was going to ask you, can you tell me about some of your favourite synthetics, the ones that you oh. really enjoy using? And... Which ones? Well, I really like Ambroxan. I use Ambroxan in tobacco rose to amplify the ambergris note. Mm. I don't use um, real castorium. I don't use real civet. Um, so those are synthetics that I really appreciate because I have smelt the um, the natural. So I have smelt natural civet and I have smelt natural castorium. And there is no real true difference. So I do think, well, why would you go and hurt a small animal when you can actually... Yeah. So actually, I think it's the... Um, yeah, the animalic synthetics that really that really move me. They're the ones yeah. that I think are, are, are fantastic because they're they're virtually nature identical. Oh, the other one is Costas as well because when I was um, creating Dryad, I did two versions. So you can't use Costas at all. So Ifra have said no, no, no. You can't use it. Not That's, even. What even is Costas? It's not the same as labdanum, is it? What is it? No, no. It's it's slightly different. So it's um it's Costas root. Um, so different plant. Mm. Um, but you but you cannot use it in perfume at all. But I thought, mm. well, I've got some, and I can be really bad, and I can do one because I just wanted to see. I just mm. you know for my own. I don't know. I don't know. Just, I just needed to know. So I did one with real Costas one with synthetic costas you would never know the difference yeah and so actually i think sometimes synthetics are demonized yeah really i couldn't do what i do without them you you know like many other perfume makers so yeah yeah it's and it's a shame that they do get demonized yeah because, yeah um i mean i my guess is that synthetic molecules or synthetic perfume materials are made with the point in mind of being kind to the skin. That's yeah. going to be part of the creation process is to make sure it's not yeah. going to aggravate. Yeah. And a lot of people say, oh, those nasty synthetics, I don't want that on my no. skin. But they're no. safer. It's crazy, Claire. There's yeah. the, the whole sort of green kind of beauty, green, clean, whatever you want to call it. And I just think th this is utter nonsense. This is a marketing tool. Mm. You, you're absolutely right. You know, so you take a synthetic rose material, you're going to be able to use it in a much higher percentage than you mm. are the real material, you know, the genuine yeah. natural material, if you want to call it. I hate doing that. You know, one's genuine, one's not. Mm. But, but, you know, rose oil, rose absolute, there's a lot of allergens in there, you know, mm. a lot stuff you don't really maybe want on your skin in high doses yeah. and so I find I don't know this whole clean beauty that it it's got this and it's got that and I think well yeah that's all very well and good but mother nature is wonderful but she also creates a lot of poisons mm. she creates a lot of allergens and you don't have that issue with the well most of yeah. the you do not have that issue so yeah because i was uh, wondering with rose in particular it's so restricted now isn't it yeah that if you was to put only natural rose and no synthetics and no geranium yeah you probably wouldn't smell it in a perfume would you or you yeah i mean I think you'd, you'd probably know it was there i think you you know it was there on some mm. level but yeah i mean but then you're talking about so then if you've got let's say a rose absolute if you were to wind that into a formula and you probably would still smell it at the end, but is it going to have the complexity of maybe a real rose? So if you're trying to create something that is almost nature identical or something realistic, you've got to use the synthetics because mm. rose absolute doesn't really smell like a rose when you plunge your nose into it. You know, yeah. you have to you have to sort of fill it out and pad it out and create that impression. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think um, I think there's yeah synthetics they're wonderful but i think maybe what's happening is when people say oh i don't like them a bit like i say oh my god bloody amber max is people are just using too much of it yeah um and then when it becomes to the point of conscious detection is when it becomes an issue when people start saying god you know it's like a, a kind of sledgehammer in my brain you know mm. i'm getting a headache from it mm. um because i think it's just standing front and center and it's just too much, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just to lighten the mood, um, Tony says, does Liz like beans on toast? 
I do. With loads, <laughs> <laughs> with loads of grated cheese on the top. But when I do my beans on toast, I get a great big, so get a big spoon, big dollop of butter, lob that in your baked beans, warm it all up, heat it all up, and it makes the sauce go really, really rich and unctuous. Who else is getting Nigella feels at the moment? <laughs> Uh, Thomas says, how did Liz decide on the name of the brand Papillon? Okay, so um, the name came about that I was looking at um, the how fragrance is made, that you start with these in isolation, these relatively simple materials that have the ability to metamorphosize into something ah. bigger than the some of their parts and so for me it was about the metamorphosis from a handful of materials that that can create something utterly beautiful and to me i think yeah it was the butterfly for me that almost followed the same path mm. you know that that period of um yeah so so that's where it came from yeah, but you could also say that applying perfume could also change you as yeah. a person. So you can change your mood, can change how you're yeah. feeling. Yeah, it was, the, it was the whole um, the whole concept around um, metamorphosis. Mm. And I really liked that. And so um, the butterfly, for me, represented that um, really, really well. So that's where, that's where it came from. Okay, right. Um... Let me just, I think they're, they're all getting a bit excited about the Nigella, <laughs> the Nigella reference. Tony says, Liz gets up in the middle of the night to bake. I'll be looking out for her on TV at Christmas. <laughs> you, could, you could totally, I mean, when you look at what you're, the pictures and, and whatnots that you put out, or the beautiful cakes, <laughs> cocktails, you could totally do the whole Nigella thing as well. I'm sure you've got time. <laughs> I love Nigella. I think she's a goddess. I think yes. she's absolutely wonderful. That set, I mean, sex and food. Yeah. It's all there, isn't it? Well, I do actually believe there is a real correlation. <laughs> actually, we're going kind of off piste here, aren't we? <laughs> but I'm, I always say, <laughs> I've on. always said that um, I'm really suspicious of people who won't put certain things in their mouths, you know, like fuss, fussy people. <laughs> <laughs> because i do think even though i don't like pineapple on pizza but i do think that it is that those sensual pleasures aren't they mm. the the eating and the feeding and the and what you're prepared to eat and how adventurous mm. you're going to be that i will judge you <laughs> <laughs> i will know <laughs> right let's have a look what else have we got um have you ever considered adding complementary products to the range? I have. And you know what? My daughter, I get a phone call. Well, she phones me quite a bit. But once a month, I have a phone call that is started by, Mummy, candles. And I'm like, oh, jazz, darling. You know, I've got so much to do. I have not got time to do candles. What I really want. So... Jazz is saying candles, candles, because she really wants an Anubis candle. Yeah. Which I have said, look, I'll have a play and I'll make you an Anubis candle. Um, but I'm not, you know, I don't have the time at the moment to really focus on that. I really love, I did have a really, really great idea of um, having uh, pure parfums next to the existing fragrances, mm. but with a spin on them. And I will say it because you know if it happens it happens and if someone steals my idea then we'll know because i <laughs> said it here yeah so um it took me a really long time sourcing the perfect sandalwood for um bengal rouge and i use an australian sandalwood in anubis which is lovely and it works beautifully in anubis because it has um slightly sort of petrolic notes that that the work for that fragrance, but I knew they weren't going to work for Bengal Rouge. So anyway, cut a long story short, I got this Indian sandalwood that was sent to me by a very reputable supplier, and it was stunning. And so I had the, and I was playing in the studio. I was taking some of the compound of Anubis and some of the compound of Angelique and all of them, mm -hmm. and basically adding Indian sandalwood over the top as a pure mm -hmm. parfum. And it 
they were gorgeous. You know, when you're very, very different, so very much dab and sniff. And I thought, oh my good, goodness, this would be fantastic. Because what I could do is do, say, rose over sandalwood. And with Anubis, we could do suede over sandalwood. Mm. Taking Anubis and adding sandalwood, and we could do it with Angelique, and that could be Oris over sandalwood, and mm. so on and so forth. Yeah. So maybe in time. But, mm. you know, I think I'm going to need a few more hands on deck, you know, yeah. if I'm going to... Um, expand my repertoire beyond just creating a fragrance and doing what I do at the moment but yeah I'd love to I'd love to but yeah. no reed diffusers mm. there won't be reed diffusers are you against them I'm not against them I, my mum actually bought me some a few years ago and they were really really nice mm. I just um I just don't think that they work really well for like a day and then all of a sudden you can't smell them that's the only problem yes. I have some seem to be quite good and some yeah. not so good. Yeah. But I would love, I mean, I would love to see sort of body products. You know, like Francesca has done the oils, the sublime oils. Yeah. I think that yeah. would work lovely because you can yeah. use them in your hair, you can use yeah. them in your body. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think, I, I think that would work quite nicely. Yeah, I think I'm definitely, I think in the, in time that will happen and mm. i mean you know fairly you know we're still quite a, a you know baby company really you know only been going nearly seven years so there's time there's lots of time for all these lovely new things you mm. know gorgeous things yeah <laughs> I, I, have, I have lots of ideas you know and i think um yeah i need to find i need to find the point at which i go okay well maybe i'm not going to release another perfume then what I'm going to do is I'm going to release some products to complement mm. what, what is standing. So yeah. yeah, I can see that really going down a storm. Yeah, I think so. And Thank Thomas is, Thomas has just said Bengal Rouge candle. Take my money now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do one just for Thomas then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So I think now it's maybe time that we move on to talk about what you've got coming out next year. Okay. Yeah. Well. So, um, yeah. I I made some notes from I have stalked your Instagram a little bit and stalked. That's right. You stalk away. <laughs> so we've got a new fragrance. Uh, last I saw, it was coming out in July. Is that still the case? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. it has notes of white ambergris, Siberian pine, which has a mandarin-like note to it. Oh, it's, yeah, lovely. Black this. hemlock, green sacra, frankincense, ilang ilang, and Indian sandalwood. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, you just talked about sandalwood. When you say Indian sandalwood, does that automatically mean Mysore or, or does it not necessarily? No, just the region in which it's grown. And um, they're, they're very, very different. I mean, when I first found this Indian sandalwood, I remember asking, and again, very reputable supplier. So this, is, mm. this isn't coming from some dodgy, you know, backstreet seller. Mm. And I said to them, is it Mysore sandalwood? And um, the rep said, I don't know, I'll get back to you. And I said, I'm going to need an answer because people mm. will ask me and I need to have an honest answer. So yeah. this is, don't give me any blarney now. <laughs> and, um, and bless her, you know, she, she went when she said, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm waiting, waiting for them to come back. And this went on for ages. And I said, I'm, I do need an answer. Mm. No, it's not my soul, but it has it's never going to be like my source of underwood. I have samples of it in the studio. Mm. But what I'm able to do, I hope, is recreate the impression of that, mm. which is what I try to do in Bengal Rouge, that it is my source. But it's Indian sandalwood. It's a lot creamier. It's a lot smoother. The Australian sandalwood has quite a lot of green facets, mm. I find. Um, that that don't have that sort of luxurious buttery feel mm. that you associate with sandalwood so this indian sandalwood does but it's not my sore sandalwood yeah that was as close as i could get with the supplier anyway but yes. i thought well at least they've told me that at least they yeah. give me something but yeah sometimes getting the information claire is is tough and, and again mm. for me it's about consistency with every batch so let's say somebody offered me a kilo of my sauce sandalwood now and i'd get very excited about it mm. what am i going to do when that kilo mm. goes you know yes. i have to i have to have reliable supply chains for 
every material so yeah. and that that was essential as well but it's a really nice you've got to come down come down to the studio at some moment i would love to thank and you and you can smell Absolutely. the difference yeah. between the two because they are blindingly different mm. um, you know you you're not even talking subtle differences mm. um you know what you know th this this is they're hugely different and mm. so for bengal rouge it took me a really long time because this fragrance had been in my mind for <clears throat> excuse me a long time but i couldn't find the sandalwood to fit it um but yeah i did eventually oh you froze but you're back so it's fine yeah <laughs> Yeah, I was surprised with sandalwood because I tried. Um, I don't know if you've seen a, a new brand called And Fragrance. It's, no, uh, Simon Constantine from Lush. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. He's um, he's created his own brand. It's ethical, sustainable, and one of his fragrances is called Sand, and that okay. has a dead sand, deadwood, dead sandalwood, and it's quite a different note from what you might recognise in, say, Samsarah or in yeah. Bengal Rouge. Um, yep. It's not that kind of rich, spicy, um, moist smell. It's very mm. dry. Okay. And it's really interesting to me how sandalwood can really differ yeah. in different perfumes. And, and also, I think the longer... So there's certain materials, Claire, that I have no problem buying them in in large quantities. Mm. So, you know, you know, kilo, five kilos and what have you. Because the longer they're left the better they become mm. which again can be slightly problematic when you're compounding because obviously you want everything to to be the same you know yeah. that consistency with everything but so materials like patchouli and tolu sandalwood you know you can lay those down for years and they're, mm. they're only going to get better whereas things like bergamot lemon mandarin you need to whip through those really really quickly yeah or they oxidize and smell really nasty okay is that because they're just more volatile yeah yeah, yeah just um yeah it, it's just to do with molecular weight and um they don't like light and they don't like heat and then they're, they're fragile and they're difficult and mm -hmm. like some people i know <laughs> <laughs> Don't name any names. Reminded me a bit of my eldest daughter, actually, that when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I love Hopefully her. she doesn't watch this. <laughs> um, so what her. can you what can you tell us? Is there anything more you can tell us about okay. this new okay. perfume? I won't I won't tell you the name yet, and that's not yeah. because I'm being you know precious about it. The reason I don't is only a superstition of mine. Mm. I did it once before with a fragrance that I completed. And it had taken me so long bloody finishing this fragrance. By the time I was done and I contacted the supplier for one of the key materials, they said, we no longer offer it. And I was like, that's great, because I just told everybody that this is going to be the next perfume. And I've released the name and what yeah. have So I have a superstition now that I won't release yeah. the name. Um, but what I will tell you is um, next year will be the seventh birthday of Papillon. I'm going to be releasing the perfume in the seventh month on the seventh day. Oh. Um, and that is, uh, so we're going to go full circle with this fragrance. So Anubis was the first fragrance I created. And I need to back that up with, um, I'm not creating a flanker, mm -hmm. but we're moving in that direction. We're going to go full circle from Anubis to where we are now. Mm. And so seven on a metaphysical level, we're going back to Egypt, Claire. This is okay. where we're going. So that's a bit of a clue. Yeah. Um, was a god number. In fact, the Egyptians didn't have the number seven. It didn't exist. It it was God. Mm. And so um, we're going we're going back there again. And we're going we're going through a different chapter with the gods this time. Okay. So that's <laughs> are you are you willing to describe slightly how it might smell? Yeah, I've got it here. I've got it here in the actual Oh my god, you can't the name. <laughs> you can see the colour of that. Oh, hang on. <laughs> I did um, look up the material. So you've got black hemlock, which yeah. sounds like it's quite green. Um, and you I take it you use it in quite a small quantity. Yeah. So so black hemlock is um if you if you imagine it as a variation of, of pine. Mm. Oh, hang on, let me put get rid of this. My phone's on left power mode um yeah so imagine it as um it, it does have a greenness but it has a mm. sweetness as well so imagine a pine resin 
So imagine resins as opposed to the leaf. Um, yeah. So yeah, it has a um, rich, almost like caramelized sugar note that kind of Ooh. dusts over the greenness. Um, mm. And um, I just think it's a it's a glorious material, and it helps to anchor the Siberian pine oil mm. together. So what it what it's creating is is a whole as opposed to the Siberian pine acts very much as a top note but I wanted to push that right down into the middle of the fragrance. Mm. Um, but there's a lot going on with that. And it's, it has a smoky quality as well. So there is a little, I, I sprayed it on Jazz the other day um, when I saw her from a distance and just sprayed her with it. And she said, oh, it's, um, it's, it's really, she said, I wish I could smell it, mummy, because I've mm. got one nostril that works, but it smells a little bit smoky. Mm. Um, so yeah, it has a, but very gentle smoke. So we're not talking on the level of Anubis. I yeah. really, I mean, I really, really like it. It's very different, Claire. So it's very mm. different from anything else that's in the collection at the moment. Um, so I couldn't, I couldn't even liken it to any of the other fragrances. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, because so I was curious because it had this Siberian pine and then it had the black hemlock, which is kind of like a piney type note. I, th I think, and, yeah, it, it feels like, I, I know people think, oh, we're going back to the forest, we're going back mm -hmm. to Dryad. Yeah. I used um, the Siberian pine and the black hemlock for sort of very, very different reasons. So if we're, if we're going back to Egypt, and if we're talking about, let's go back to the mummification process where a lot of resins, especially pine resins, were used in the um, preservation of the body. Mm. That's where we're going, Claire. <laughs> that's where we're going with this. So that's why I wanted to use those materials because I mm. felt they were very synonymous with the um, conceptual idea that I had for the fragrance. And they work really nicely. Yeah. So. Wow, so excited. I bet everyone <laughs> is really excited about that. And I think the thing where you do take your time with your releases, what mm. that does is it creates such an excitement when you do finally mm. start to announce a release and I think mm. it just has this massive build up because obviously it's not like you're releasing something sort of t twice a year it's it's um yeah. the time yeah, it, I can I promise it's not it's not contrived because no, I think I know. people are thinking oh my god that's probably really contrived on her part it's not I mean I couldn't think of anything worse than just you know chucking out another fragrance after another fragrance um mm. I know I firstly I know I wouldn't be happy with with that fragrance and secondly I just want to create curate rather a line of fragrances that that as I said earlier when we were chatting you know that stand the test of time I don't mm. want them to be disposable and so with that I think comes a responsibility to ensure that there is something about that fragrance that will will hopefully um you know create that yeah i think definitely um <laughs> i'll just quickly have a look at some comments here uh scott says sounds so beautiful and i for one cannot wait sue oh. says i can't wait for this one to come out uh scott says we need to form an orderly queue liz <laughs> says uh, sorry yeah, Liz says, uh, Rose and Jones Liz says, yeah. Liz has a gorgeous grim side, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely do have like a hint of the macabre uh, slash uh, witch, witchy side. I I, there is something a bit wrong with me actually. I'm forever <laughs> sort of rummaging around in the earth looking for bones and things. And I, I don't know, <laughs> I suppose the things that other people think are a bit weird, I, I guess I don't. I, I'm mm. very accepting of of anything and every one. I don't, I don't, I don't care what anyone does. Yeah. Well, let's the, just be weird. The flesh, uh, the flesh book kind of gave quite a lot away. <laughs> I'm not yeah. to we eat people. Let's not eat people. Don't do that. <laughs> That's pretty gross. You have to let me know how that book is. So that I do I read will. A, a, quite a lot of crime and um, thrillers and Stephen King. Oh, Dean I Coots. love Stephen King. Yeah, yeah. I love Stephen King. I love that. I love mis like mysticism and uh, yeah. the supernatural. And actually, that's something else that I saw on your Instagram. When you when you announced the notes of your new perfume, mm. you did say to someone, they said it sounded mystical. And you said, oh, there's a, there's a bit of a clue there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> I'm going to have to message you after and tell you what it is. I mean, 
<laughs> is um yeah there there is um well very very mystical i really want to say something oh, I, don't want to, I don't want to force you to say something you don't want to say <laughs> i'm just but, gonna get that wrong <laughs> I, think, I love the mystical i do i really love the mystical so really yeah. excited for your new yeah. release now if anyone else has got any more questions do say so now uh, i'm going to quickly check my own list of questions um let's have a look someone did ask and i know you said you did an online um no not an online you did a naturals course is that the only sort of official training that you've had yeah and it yeah, was just a, well, how did you i mean how do you go about then sort of following that on in terms of teaching yourself is it literally just trying to obtain materials playing with them yeah it was it, and i think as well what the five day natural course gave me um because had it been the other way around let's say i'd done a five day synthetic course mm. i would have come home and i would have been walloping things together and it would have been a huge success you know like well hey look here's a fragrance mm. What the naturals do is they're really difficult. You know, the, these are the temperamental materials that mm. you're going to put in a formula and think it's all going to be lovely, and it's not. Yes. And so they, they're they're almost like your your taskmaster. They 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 are the part of the creation process that stand over you, reminding you that actually you you don't know everything, and a lot of it is trial and error. And what you think might work and be absolutely blindingly beautiful is actually a load of absolute rubbish. <laughs> and so I think people also probably think that it all comes still very naturally to me, that I just go in the studio and I go, oh, this is all going to be wonderful. And I sit in there, you know, procrastinating, and there have been times when I've thrown things around in a temper tantrum, um, because yeah for me it's still fun you know it's still mm. fun it, it almost feels like i'm still experimenting but the naturals will have the ability to to challenge you every mm. single time but they are the materials that i absolutely love because yeah. of that um mm. because they they're constantly making you do better all the time mm. um yeah and i love that part of it oh brilliant um yeah so naturals i mean I've recently discovered, I, I don't know if you would have tried them, but there's a, a company or a, a brand in Australia called Tioni Reinfell. Have you seen? No. So am I terrible? I need to try all these. Well, so. no. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I mean, if you're happy to have me come down, I'll bring yeah. some I'll bring some with me. And you can. She is an absolute genius. And there's this one particular fragrance, because um, we were talking about Mysore sandalwood, mm. and it's called Embers. It's the most beautiful. She's got this... Papua New Guinea vanilla tincture with oh, seven lovely. and a half percent Mysore sandalwood. Oh my goodness! Uh, so it, it's, it is stunning. Like I think it's on. It's kind of like Bengal Rouge territory in terms of. And she the sells it as a fragrance. Sorry, she sells it as a fragrance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, oh, a, it's, a, it's a completed fragrance. They're, they're what I remember being in there. I think it's a little bit of rose. Um, it's absolutely stunning. So yeah, if you want to sort of, if you want to bring me down, make me yeah. a Victoria sponge, then um, <laughs> well, I'll bring you some. I'll bring you some of the um, some of these all natural because a lot obviously all naturals get this reputation of of being, as you say, they can be very muddy, can't they? And it can be, it can smell like a spa or it can smell like a yeah. massage oil. But um, this lady Tioni is a genius, and wow. the the, the what's what's going on in embers is something else so oh, yeah send, send me the link after this yeah. play. I'd, lo I'd love to check out her work so because that's the other thing i really love to support mm. you know other indies within yeah. the industry i think it's, mm. it's a really positive thing so mandy aftel i did have i think i've used or she did a vanilla one which was um gosh i can't i'm, I'm so embarrassing i can't remember the name i've used it all up but it was sort of smoke and vanilla and mm. it was like sort of fireside vanilla i would describe it was beautiful and that's all yeah. natural mm. um, and i think yeah huge you know respect mm. to the, those artists who are able to pull it off because it must, yeah yeah it must be difficult it's a definite yeah. skill isn't there working with but definitely yeah mm. um and what else were we going to say um 
Oh, I was going to ask you, so mm. I know you're friendly with different indie brands and what have you. Do you have like a little WhatsApp group where you all have a little chat and a rant? And a... <laughs> no, we, no, we should. We should. Mm. We need one actually. But no, I tend to sort of, um, I tend to communicate with them individually because I yeah. suppose we, I always think that everyone knows everyone, but mm. then you find out that that's not the case at all. Mm. Um, but yeah, I have huge, huge respect for my fellow indies and, mm. uh, um so so say when nick from gallivant um and i were chatting we we just do it between us yeah, yeah he's lovely isn't he he's mm, really yeah nice. um and he sent me some samples of his stuff which i thought was lovely so yeah and no, i can see i see you guys um supporting each other and yeah you know, talk about each other's perfumes online sometimes and, yeah, yeah. It's i great. think it's yeah. Mm. Yeah, you got you know there's enough room for all of us that's the thing that's it um, yeah you know, and and we need to make the biggest noise, really. Um, you know, we're we're competing against the big boys, and mm. so you know, we we've got to have each other's backs. And I think yeah. to have it any other way is just ludicrous, to be honest. Mm. So, um, yeah. Okay. Right. Let's have a look. Um, Joe Lofthouse says, "Which of Liz's creations is she most proud of, and why?" Mm. Well, I'm proud of all of them. Um, because I, I had different journeys and experiences with all of those fragrances leading up to, you know, their official release. But I would say probably Salome because um, I had a lot of people telling me I'd lost my mind and that it would be the death of a brand that a lot of people at that point were looking at and saying, oh my goodness, you know, she's done three really nice perkins and they're really good and we really like them. And now she's going to come along and really ruin it. And um, but and it wasn't because I was being provocative. Uh, maybe I was being a bit provocative. I think it, you know, Salome was born off the back of um, a lot of people um, in the perfume world that were talking about fragrance and loved fragrance, lamenting the loss of, um, you know, the halcyon days of perfumery when there was animalics and sheepers. Mm. It, you know, now Ifra have ruined all that. And I was a bit like, no, 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 I don't think Ifra have ruined it. I think what's mm. happened is the styles have changed. You know, maybe people don't want this anymore. Mm. And so so Salome, in a way, was my challenge. Like, well, do you want it? And what's your safe word? You know, because <laughs> I think... <laughs> because I think, um, you know, I was reading a lot of stuff, you know, on Base Notes forums and people talking about, you know, where are the animalics? And oh, I remember it. And I was thinking, well, do you really want this? Mm. Do you? And and so in a way, it was a bit of a, are you ready for it? Mm. And and so I went out on a limb, really, with a fragrance that I knew was only going to be um, loved by a select few, mm. um, and not everyone. And yes. I, I I felt that was quite a brave move at the point that the the brand was at at that point. Um, yeah. But as I said to you earlier in our conversation, you know, it created it created conversation. You know, people were talking, whether that be good or bad, mm. and 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 that to me is quite exciting. Yeah, it's to have that. I remember because this. Wait, what year was this now? How many years ago? Mm. So Salome. So the brand launched in two thousand and seven or sixteen. I've got a thing there, 16, so, so Salome was 2000 and, no, 2016 was when Salome was launched, sorry, mm. yeah, yeah. it's got to be okay. 16. Yeah, you sent me a sample and I was, I was obviously reviewing back then, but I feel like I've come a, a little way since then, and you sent me the sample and I just couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't even, I mean, I did put it on my skin once, but I just could I couldn't, and um and I want, I would have loved to have reviewed it, but I just wasn't, I didn't know. Were well, you terrified, to... Claire? No, it is. And I, yeah. I hear you because when I created it, I think I spent so long with the fragrance. I was, um, I, like I say, it just absorbed me and I, mm. I, and I loved it and I wore it before it, you know, before I released it. And, and then it was really, and I think I spent so long with that fragrance 
but I then left it alone. It is mm. almost like you were my baby. Now you're not my baby. I'm doing mm. with another baby now. And I went back to it. I was going, I mean, Simon loves it. When I wear Salome, Simon always thinks it, it's like an olfactory come on. Right. Like, no, no, I'm just wearing Frey. Go away. Stop <laughs> um, but I think um, when I when I did go back to it, I was a, a bit like Christ, Liz. You pushed it to the point where there was almost no going back. Mm. And so there is part of me, I'm quite crap. Now when I look at it, I'm able to sort of evaluate it with, with different eyes, almost as someone who didn't create it. And, and so I do think, well, well done, Liz, because you almost went the whole way. Probably for you, Claire, it did go the whole way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it stopped just short of mm. falling off into um, absolute porn rather than yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit so what is, um, what's your bestseller oh it, it depends on the demographic and you mm. know so um in well italy a lot of tobacco rose um anubis i think will always be up there mm. i'd say the one that probably gets the least amount of love because they all you know, Bengal Rouge from the moment it was launched mm. did exceptionally well. I mean, I sold out and then sold out and mm. I just kept thinking I'm forever going to sell out with this fragrance, um, is Angelique. And I think because Angelique is, when I say a different style, it, it is intentionally a different style. You know, yeah. that fragrance was, you know, so that fragrance is an olfactory portrait of my children's heads when they were babies in a way so i took that as part of my um concept in the early days and moved it towards this point of making a wearable fragrance um pulling in other aspects with flowers and what you and so it is a very different style and mm. i think because the others are quite big they're quite robust fragrances mm. Angelique tends to get a little bit overlooked. You know, she has her lovers. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I would say in terms of my bestseller, it depends what country as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's um Angelique is the one that everyone tends to forget about. Yeah, I, I like it's, I see what you mean, because it, it really it's a it's a definitely a more quieter yeah. um it's it's not a big bold presence. No. But, because I remember I overlooked it at the beginning. I got the free yeah. samples when you first launched. I got the free samples. And yeah. I thought Angelique was really nice. But in my fragrance journey at that point, I was looking for, I, I'd only just discovered that you could get gourmand fragrances and um, incense in fragrances. Yeah. And they really excited me at that point. So yeah. anything that was a slightly, to me, more normal, yeah, I was kind of like just disregarding. And then I came back to Angelique only last year or so, yeah. retried it, and I was like, no, this is really beautiful, but in a completely different way to mm. your it is. bolder sense. Yeah. It's just a very different fragrance. And I mm. wear I always wear it in the spring. I mean, mm. for me, I just love it in the spring. And when I wear it, I think, oh, Liz, it's, it's lovely, yeah. you know? And, mm. and it is, um, but I think the others are just such attention seekers. Yeah. You know, the other perfumes are, and Angelique just sits there. It still sells exceptionally well, but mm. not at the rate of the others. Yeah. Um, but I think it has its sort of loyal fan club. Yeah, and I'm, I'm definitely a fan. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And I love the way you spray perfume as well, Claire. You're a girl after my own heart. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we don't want any of this nonsense, little tiny little dab, you oh, know. No. <laughs> we want to give it all the whoosh. Oh, yes, definitely. What's, I mean, what's the point? You're going to put perfume on. You need to be able to smell it. Everyone else needs to be able to smell it. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. Okay, let's just have a quick check. Um... Uh, Tim says, Salome's on my want list now. I set my sample aside when I got it. Too much used underwear, I thought. Oh, <laughs> then yeah, that's what's bad. Like, <laughs> then it drew me back like any difficult work of art. Now my sample is almost gone. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, right. If anyone else has anything more to say, I think we've probably gone for nearly two hours, and I'm sure. I think my battery's about to go. I'm looking at my battery. <laughs> probably mine will too, as well. So, if anyone wants to say anything more, then um, then do say so now, or forever hold your peace. 
Um, in the meantime, thank you so much, Liz. It's been an wow. absolute thank pleasure. You. Oh, it's lovely, Claire. Thank you. Oh, I've enjoyed it. It's been lovely. Yeah, I do hope I get to see you next year at some point. Yeah, please life. come down. Yeah, I'll come, come down. You. We'll love to. <laughs> Forage in the woods or something with an owl. And... Yeah. <laughs> can we ride your horse and fly your owl? And, yeah, uh, we can do all of that. We can do all of that. <laughs> Sniff all the perfume materials. Yeah. No, I'd, lo I'd love to see you. You're most welcome to come down here when it when we're allowed to mix again. Yeah. Come down. Lovely. Well, oh, I think we'll, we'll cut it there then. Thank you yeah. so much. Oh, thanks, Claire. And much love to you for giving up your time on a Saturday afternoon <laughs> to chat to us all. And I think everyone's <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed your company. Oh, thank you. You've been an absolute star. So thank oh. you. And we'll say goodbye to everyone. And uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for all your comments. I'm so sorry that I couldn't do mention every comment because it, there's so many people here and so many comments. But... Um, I just appreciate you coming along and I'll we'll see you all very, very soon. Bye. And then I press end, end broadcast.